Welcome to the Fabulous Fitness and Beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, co-host with my wife, Janetta. Today we're going to be talking about a fundraiser in our local area for Hope Unlimited. You stay tuned and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race. Keep your own pace, keep moving and never stop. Just go, go, it go with what you got. Our guests today are from Hope Unlimited. It's a, a family, I don't know, what would you classify it as? It's a, I know it's a different things. Well, we're a Christ-centered, pro-life center uh, that helps men, women, and families in need in Whoever needs Western it, right. Kentucky and right. Southern Illinois. This is Bobby Gwill, and you're the director. Yes. And this is Julie Estes, and you're the uh, personnel, public affairs, whatever. Yes. You know, whatever. <laughs> said, she told me she was whatever. <laughs> yeah. well, we're glad to have you all today. Well, and you. Uh, uh, we wanted to talk about you. You have a fundraiser coming up. Tell us about that a little bit, will you? Well, I'll let Julie, Julia start. Okay, our fundraiser is going to be on September 23rd and it's going to start at 6.30 in the evening, and it's going to be at Broadway uh, Baptist at the... First Baptist. First, First Baptist, Baptist at on the Great Broadway. Hall. It is on Broadway. Yes, on Broadway in the Great Hall. And usually we do a banquet every year, and this year we're going to switch it up a little bit, and we're going to have an evening of dessert and music. So we're going to have dessert from different local businesses and have um, some chocolate fountains and stuff like that, so that should be fun. And we're actually going to have speakers from our staff, our volunteer, and also our client base. So you're going to get to hear some personal testimonies about how Hope Unlimited has actually made a difference in their life and in the community. So for anybody who has wanted to know more about what Hope Unlimited is doing and how we're actually affecting the people in the community and changing people's lives, it should be a great night to come out and hear what we're doing. And the music will be uh, the music pastor from First Baptist Church, Steve Moore, and Brad Voss, who's the music pastor at Heartland, plus a local family. They play the cello and the violin. Uh, going to do music while they're eating their desserts, and then some special music. So, and even some, everyone will be singing a couple times during the evening. So, we're looking forward to this difference. Uh, it Yes, it will be uh, different, and uh, a lot of times people like something different. You know, you do the same thing over and over and over, and uh, so this uh, sounds like it would. And the testimonies of the people are actually what really touches people's right. heart. They, when they give money, they know that somebody has been help, helped right. by it. Our goal is, it's called, the title is Making a Difference for Every Heartbeat, and what we're trying to do is the volunteer and the staff person is telling how hope has made a difference in their life and then in turn has made a difference in the client's life. And then after the client talks, then we want to turn it over to the audience and ask them, are you willing to make a difference now in partnering with us to help these uh, families in need? So we're hoping that we can get everybody involved. And some of them may, I'm sure they have testimony, some in the audience that you yes. won't even know about. So, but um, this is, of course, this is something that's dear to my heart because I, I was telling you before we started that I served on a pregnancy center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for several years till we moved up here. And then I became involved with, uh, they were starting a new center in Mayfield. I became involved with that and helped mm -hmm. get it started and served on their board for a few years. And then I kind of retired uh, <laughs> off of that, but I'm always doing something, you know, so. And we're always looking for volunteers, and while we're here, I make a plea for volunteers. Uh, uh, in our Hope's Closet, which is a slightly used, uh, very nice clothing for babies to adults, always needing help in our store, and always needing help with mentoring the clients that come in, and help with helping with the office work, answering the telephone, and. Maybe there's some women or men out there that are just looking for a couple hours a week or a day a week to they come can out work, and help us. Work as little or as much right. as they want to, can't right. they? Yes. 
uh, I was going to ask you about some of your needs, what they were. And Definitely we always need baby items, baby supplies. Uh, we're always looking for diapers and baby wipes and formula and the baby wash, the baby shampoo, things like that. Because uh, the clients we have, uh, Julia may want to go into that, our Learn to Earn program. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell them a little bit about how they get these items. The Learn to Earn program, I think, is just a very, very wonderful program. And the basis of the program is the clients can come in and they have an appointment they set up every two weeks and they'll come in and see a mentor, kind of talk to them a little bit about what's going on in their life, things like that, sit down and have a discussion with them, and then they'll bring in homework. And their homework consists of at least one Bible study. And then we can give them like parenting books and things like that that they can read. But that's just a, a good way for them to kind of get a solid biblical foundation while earning supplies for their children. And we also offer parenting classes and we're offering them to our Learn to Earn clients, but we're also now offering them to anyone in the community. You don't have to be a part of our program to come in and take our classes. And these parenting classes, they're just teaching very valuable skills to the people in the community, things they might not have known otherwise, helping them be more secure in being able to parent their children. And the Learn to Earn program, when they come in, they know that one, they're going to have somebody to talk to, someone that's going to listen to them, someone that's going to care about them and help them through whatever kind of troubles they might be going through in life, but two, that they're going to get the supplies they need to take care of their children, which takes a lot of stress off of some of the families. We even have married couples that are coming in because we also have a men's support group, and so um, there will be a male mentor that will meet with someone's husband, and then a woman mentor will meet with the wife. And that just gives them a really good opportunity to come in and kind of just share and kind of kind of let go a little bit, you know, have somebody to talk to. And we offer all the supplies that we have. We have everything that they would possibly need. We have the wipes. We have the clothes. We have diapers. We have baby wash. I mean, anything that they would need to take care of their child, they can get through our Learn to Earn program. You know, we sit here and. I'll big part of our audience sits out there and they don't understand a lot of the basic things that are taught in those classes. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I ran a halfway house for years myself and uh, I always said we were the last stop before the prison and the first stop out and that's virtually mm -hmm. what we were. But, and then I pastored for a lot of years and I remember we had this one young couple they were a uh, uh, mixed race couple. They had two children. And she, uh, she did not know body hygiene, you know, mm -hmm. BO and stuff like that. And our church was a loving church that accepted people where they were, if you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our ladies, real fine, you know, fancy dresser, nice lady, she took her under her wing. And she began to personally teach her, you know, body hygiene, taking care of yourself and things like that. And it made all the difference in the world in this, in this uh, <coughs> mother, young mother's life. I mean, mm -hmm. and she, it changed. She learned how to dress. She learned how to take care of herself. And, but uh, the majority of the people saying that don't understand that there are people that don't know basic hygiene. Correct. But if you've not been raised and taught that, you don't know that. It's like her book, y'all may know about her book, Stories of Hope, uh, which deals with crisis pregnancy centers. And there was one lady in this book who had how many abortions? Fifteen. She had fifteen, 15 abortions. Fifteen abortions. It was her birth control. It was her method of birth control. The thing about it, she didn't know any better. Now, I mean, we, we sit here and and say, I don't know how, but for one thing, her mother would bring me in home and let them do what mm. they would. And you know, that's, that's pathetic. Right. But after she became a Christian, she gave every one of those children a name, wow. you know? And, uh, and we don't realize, you right. know, we live in a, in a different world from some of these people. Right, that's, you sit home and you think that, but a lot of our clients, 
you're surprised the dysfunctional families that they oh, do yeah. come from and they yes. just have no idea. Yes. So that's why not only do we have parenting classes, but we have self-esteem, anger management, cooking classes, resumes, how to dress for a job interview, just and uh, even we have a representative from the college that comes over here and tells them how to come to college and enroll. It's we just do everything from A to Z to help these young people to, to get ahead in the world and be good parents and be able to be productive you know, in the workplace or a school, whatever they're doing. And that's so important today because you know, we've talked about computers and Facebook and Twitter and, and all this stuff and, and we think in that terminal and that's what we hear. Everybody on television, used to be everybody, had, first they got a dot com and now it's Twitter and Facebook. Follow <laughs> us on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> Everything comes up with that now, you know. But, uh, but there are still people out there. They may know Twitter and Facebook, but they don't know personal hygiene. Good. I mean, when, when you really well, think about it, get down to it. Another thing they don't know, some of them on TV, that what you put on, on that computer can haunt you for the rest of your life. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely. And they need they need to get that through their heads mm -hmm. and, and don't put stuff on there that should not be on there. Mm -hmm. Because I've heard people, I was reading a thing last night on TV that uh, some person said they check they check Facebook before they hire somebody. I've heard that. I've and, heard that. Uh, and some of these don't, they have no idea about that, right. things like that. And I was really glad to say that you have a ministry for men, because yes, so many yes. women, so many people think pregnancy is a woman's thing. It's not just a woman's thing. It's, it's the both. Right. And the abortion alternative counseling we do, it's the men that usually want the woman to, to get the abortion. It, right. And so that's why we like to speak to the men along with the woman when we have those kind of situations when they're abortion minded. And we didn't mention our medical clinic. We now have a medical clinic with ultrasounds and uh, RNs, and we have two doctors that come in twice a week and volunteer their time for prenatal, mm -hmm. uh, and they do the deliveries. And so we're helping the families and single moms and dads with that area too. Very much helping them. And I know that there's this is uh, our show is related to to people over 50, and of course you know these things. But these people can help these people. Definitely. You know, they there's, there's a lot of them over 50 who are now raising their grandkids. I was just going to say that we have a lot of grandmothers that come in that yeah. are the custodians and guardians of their grandchildren. And yeah. uh, they need to be retaught and helped uh, with this new part of their life that they weren't expecting. Well, but, go ahead. I was just going to say, we need to take a break here just a minute. That, and uh, keep your thought and we'll open the show with it the next time and, uh, and and you keep watching and we'll be right back after the break we didn't have much to give then so when they showed up firing them mean looks around the place and staring us down on prices, well, I was angry. Didn't seem to bother my father, though. He had me load another bushel of apples in their trunk. I learned later on that this family was in need. The greatest gift we give It's in our heart what we believe The way we live Caring for others. Pass it on. Welcome back. Our guests today are from Hope Unlimited Family Care Center and Medical Center. That's the proper terminology. <laughs> Family Care Center. And, and that's a great name. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great terminology uh, to use because you take care of the whole family. Right? Correct. And, and that's what we were talking about, some of the, some of the men's services and things that, that they need. I, 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 as I read her book when she wrote it, one of the, one of the sad things to me, uh, being a man, was that the father has no say so about the abortion at all yeah. if the if the mother decides to have it it's right. it's a done deal he can do it not do anything about it and i read some of the stories about how the men were just broken hearted you know they they would have taken the baby they would have raised the baby they would have done it but but they they, they couldn't do it and so that's it's good that you have both services because i'm sure i would imagine that men have uh uh 
what do you call it? Post-abortion stress. Postpartum. Yeah, postpartum. Post-abortion post stress. Yeah, stress. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just like yes. just like the women do mm -hmm. if, if, if they're involved in it. Especially if they come to that point in their life where they realize what they've done. Right. You know, right. And, and so I'm sure of that. But uh, we're talking about your fundraiser, which is going to be Thursday, September the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. And it's going to be at First Baptist Church, which is on Broadway. On Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> and we need reservations, so we just know it's going to be a sit-down uh, affair. And so, uh, like she mentioned, we have about 12 to 14 restaurants that will be sharing their wares and okay. promoting their food. And I think we have ice cream and coffee and desserts, and we'll have... For those that are sugar-free, we will have that too with fruit. Well, they, they, they're putting a board up with all that information so Good. that people can see it also. And uh, so, so we'd encourage it. And I interrupted you from a thought when we were going off. What was your thought? Um, well, I was going to say something that we haven't brought out, that all of your services are free. Yes, complimentary. There's, there's uh, no, no The only, uh, it's not really a cost, is in the medical clinic, they are all on Medicaid. And they use their Medicaid cards. Oh, okay. Uh, and we do okay. receive uh, reimbursement from Medicaid for the uh, for their medical services, but otherwise everything is absolutely free. It's kind of like when I ran the halfway house, all of my men were on food stamps, so that's one of the ways we were able to help feed right, them was right. with their food stamps. You know, mm -hmm. so so that, that was a big big assist right. for us also. But you do you can do the ultrasounds, right? Correct. We do mm -hmm. those and. And especially those that may be abortion minded, they can get an ultrasound and it's a proven fact that 97% of the women that do have ultrasounds that have been abortion minded carry their babies when they see that baby inside they, their womb. Yeah, they realize it really is a baby, you know. Right. What and is it, the sign that's out on 121, I think the Catholics put it up, it's, it's a baby, not a, not a fetus or something like uh, that. A you know? or, yeah. yeah. And, and that's that's so important. Plus, we do have adoption. We're not an adoption agency per se, but we have a liaison that uh, helps the families or the woman that's interested in adoption. And if they go that route, then she will stay with them the whole pregnancy, go to the hospital with them, and even stay with them after the baby is placed in a home. And so that's one service we provide. And maybe tell them about the post-abortion counseling. Yes. Uh, the post-abortion counseling, we were touching on post-abortion just a little bit, and we actually offer a 12-week Bible study. Mm -hmm. And the people that I'm myself of one of the people that lead it, and we also have someone else there who will lead people through a Bible study. And we're post-abortive, you know, and I've had an abortion, and two abortions actually when I was younger, and that's kind of what pressed me to come to Hope Unlimited. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll set these clients down and we'll talk to them and lead them through this 12-week Bible study so they can find forgiveness. And they realize, you know, they come to the point of realization, I'm forgiven and God has forgiven me. And they find all kinds of freedom in their life. And I myself have found that freedom. So it's a great joy to be able to take other young women and we also have books for men too to lead them through so they can also find that freedom this this is uh it's very important that they get over the guilt because mm -hmm. you do have and guilt is is something that's hard to get rid of you know because even if god has forgiven you and everybody else has forgiven you sometimes you don't forgive yourself right right and uh, that's not good you asked before what our biggest need is. Right now, as we all know, the economy and the shape it's in, of course our donations are way down. And to be able to provide the baby supplies and provide this help to women, we're really looking for monthly donors uh, to help us to partner with us in this uh, ministry. And you will, at your fundraiser, you will be taking up yes, an offering. Yes, we're for, hoping to. And I know that uh, having work that you take You'll take money now, or you'll take, they can pledge for a year yes, and, and send yes. in their money monthly or things like that, right? All right, we're talking about the modern age we even have now where they can direct take it, right, withdraw their from their accounts. accounts. We have payroll deduction. It's just unbelievable the ways. I, I was going to mention, you are, you're, you, I'm sure you're tied in with corporations for matching funds also. We're trying, we're in the process. Uh, we have a couple, but we like to, you know, make that more available and 
expand that part okay. of our uh, fundraising. That's important. A lot of a lot of nonprofit organizations miss out on matching funds from corporations. And you know, there's a list that you can get of matching fund corporations. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I worked. I served on the committee for our high school. Uh, uh, alumni Association, and uh, I, that was the one thing they were they were missing out on a lot of money from matching scholarship. I mean, matching educational funds. And I remember the first one we got. This guy gave twenty five hundred. His bank matched twenty five hundred. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. You double it. Yeah, you know, and and most of them will match it dollar for dollar if you get in and get on their list. And that's the thing about it. Uh, there's just. You, just these different things to take advantage of that are out there. Uh, boy, I'm telling you, we started halfway. We started our halfway house with nothing, literally nothing. So we learned a lot of ways to beg. <laughs> <laughs> a new way, brand new. Uh, you might have seen on the cars in the areas the Choose Life license plates. Mm -hmm. uh, the pregnancy centers all across the state of Kentucky get a percentage of the cost of those license plates. And everyone in McCracken County or Trigg County or Ballard County, whoever buys those license plates, then we get a percentage. For of, your counties. And we were told that if we could get 1,000 people, it could be 10,000 into our ministry next year. Wow. And this is a way people can, they have to buy a license plate if, right. you know, and, and where they can help. It has a really message on it, too. It's right. It's a, it's a, like it has a, a message. Plate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if you saw so many people with a choose life plate, you know, yeah. in McCracken County, that'd be wonderful. They had a hard time getting that passed, if I remember they correctly. Did. They did, they did. Yeah. That's what I thought, but, but, the, but, but I knew they did get it passed. Well, I know y'all do such such good work, and there's so much that uh, to be done out there. It's just, it's phenomenal. Our daughter was a foster parent for several, a few years, and I remember we got a two-day-old infant one time. Uh -huh. And uh, it was fun, but it was hard to give up at four months. <laughs> <too>. Yes, it <laughs> is. <laughs> but they need somebody to care, the to love them do. during that the first periods of their yes. life, and right. and foster parents do a great, great job. And uh, she just got out of it because she just got burned out. Mm. And that, the that's the problem. The, you know. the oh, state, yeah, the state can do whatever they want to with that child, and it's mm. it's frustrating. Mm. So. And we do have a center in Metropolis now. I don't know if you knew that. I did it's not know that. Been open a couple of years. It's at 305 Lincoln Street in Metropolis, and it's flourishing and growing. And uh, there was nothing in the Southern Illinois radius of a pregnancy care center, so we we're glad that we were able to get one do started you do over there. Do mm -hmm. much outreach to the colleges? We're doing a lot of outreach to the middle school and high school. What we're trying to do oh, is we're trying to expand expound our boundaries you know expand on those boundaries and get out of our comfort zone if you will I because know. for so long we've been you know you get in your building and you sit there and you wait for people to come to you but now we've been kind of thinking more on the terms of prevention how can we prevent having young ladies come into the center so we have a program that's called the task program then it's um, an acronym for teens are saying no k-n-o-w to have knowledge about sex outside of marriage and the dangers of sex outside of marriage. So we have a sexual integrity director who goes out free of charge to public school systems that'll have her middle school and high school and she teaches this curriculum. It's a one week curriculum that she'll go in and she teaches. And we're, we're seeing some good things from that. We're, we're having some, um, actually went over to a church and some of the girls at that church had went through that program and they were telling me, you know, that it really opened their eyes to what sex outside of marriage was and the dangers. So we're hearing testimonies of it's actually influencing the thoughts of the teenagers. So it's really good. Sounds like a dynamite program. It's kind of like uh, our former pastor, pastor we used to have. He, he and I would talk a lot and he says, says everybody, everybody thinks that all these teenagers listen to church music on their truck radio. He says, you get in it when they, when they don't let them change it before you listen. Said They're not listening to the, the, the gospel radio stations. They're listening to the country stations and the yeah. others. And, and which means that we have got to get outside the doors. That's right. Definitely. You know, our theory when I was passionate was you go, they come. That's right. And, uh, and, and, and if, preventive, if, we, if you can prevent a pregnancy, you're way ahead of the game. Right. 
and, and that, that's so important that, that we think about that. October 1st, uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman is going to be at Murray, and they have allowed Hope Unlimited to be a part of his concert, and they put a challenge out to all the churches that one that brings in the most baby supplies per capita, because you can be a small church or a large church, and they get a free pizza party with the Chapmans, they get a free meet and greet with the Chapmans, and wow. they're getting 20 free tickets, front row tickets to wow. the concert. So that's going on now in our churches. That's and then great. that night people can bring baby mm -hmm. supplies with October them. October the 1st. Right. October the 1st. So Does it go back, uh, what do they call it, RSEC? Is so that the Love It? I think it's going to be at the Love It. Oh, at the Love It. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Love, love It first. It and then they said if they get enough response of tickets, then they'll go over to they the go to our right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, the Love It or Tom. Well, yeah. that's wonderful because Stephen Curtis Chapman songs, young people love them. Right. You know, and they're, they, the words are great. And then the work he does with the, with the offerings. The adoption program. Right, that's, mm -hmm. that it challenge. is for the adoption, but he's allowing us to be a part of it because it's children and it's hope. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there. We had, we, we got to spend some time with him because his grandmother and grandfather were members of our church. Mm -hmm. And so we, and we knew his, mo knew his mother real well. And so we got to spend some time with him at different times like that. But uh, he's a great guy, you know. Definitely. Great guy. Well, we're out of time. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> Believe it or not, it goes fast. And I, because I, I try to tell people we're at the kitchen table and we're just talking, <laughs> and that's basically what it amounts to. But we're so glad that y'all were here with us oh, today. We want to wish you uh, great success with your fundraiser and in the future ahead. A lot of work to be done. A lot of work to All be right. done, and we're excited about some of the work that you're doing. And we just want to let you let you know that. And for those of you in our viewing audience, we want to remind you that you can find out more about our show and about our work by going to thefabulous50s.net. That's our blog and where we keep updated on everything like that. And so it's real important that you do that. Remember, we're here every week. We'll have new guests, new shows, new ideas, and we want to encourage you to come back and watch our show all the time. Remember, use it or lose it. <laughs>